Okay, today is Wednesday, November what? 22nd? 3rd. 3rd, 2016. And that beautiful vision that you're seeing in front of you is Vivian Ryan. <laughs> and I'm going to ask her some questions. Say hello, Mom. Hi, everyone. Okay, Mom. First question. Yes, honey. What is your favorite sandwich? Oh, turkey. Turkey? Turkey. With cranberries on a croissant. Oh my god, that's great to know. You thought it was going to be tuna, didn't you? Do you still have your tonsils? Nope. I had them out when I was about seven or eight years old. Really? Yep. Okay. That's a, I lost my wisdom teeth when I was, I think, 12. <laughs> Do you like your handwriting? No. You don't? No. Why not? Because it, I, it's not neat. Oh, okay. That's a dumb question. What is the first thing you notice about people? Oh. Okay, your Every time's up. No, <laughs> I'm just kidding. That's a long thought. <laughs> That's a long thought. Okay. We'll get back to that. What is your favorite smell? Oh, gee. Why did you clue me on these before? No, Who ever thought about having no, if Do you have a favorite smell, John? Absolutely. What? Food. <laughs> Any food. That sounds pretty the good. Ocean. Bacon. The ocean. Oh, okay. Bacon. Oh, the ocean. All right. The ocean. Can't bottle that. If you were a crayon, what color would you be? Blue. Oh, your favorite color. Yeah. Okay. Everybody in the world is going to be interested in this. How would you describe your childhood? Oh, okay. There you go. I, I had a wonderful childhood. Yes. How old were you when you got your first kiss? That'll be telling. Let's see. I know. It was the night before World War II when they invi invaded Japan. Oh and I was God. staying at a friend's house and they played Spin the Bottle. First time. And who was it with? Okay, Bill Raymond. You're learning all these things that doesn't matter to us. So. Okay. Who were you closest to, your mother or your father? Uh, my mother. Barbara Jean was closest to, to dad, yeah. Who was the great love of your life? Jack Ryan. What did you like best about your father? He was a gentle man. Very gentle. How would you describe your mother? Uh, she was probably the first woman liber. liber or, yeah, because she worked all her life. She preferred working to being at home. We always had a housekeeper. And that was that. That's the way my sister and I both remember our childhood. Okay. What was your favorite decade, if you could? Oh, high school was wonderful. Oh, great. Good. Best years. There was none of that um, bullying. There was none of that in those days. Everybody was friendly, as far as I was concerned. What is it that attracted you to Jack Ryan? Oh gosh, love at first sight. Yep. That's there wasn't it. any particular reason. It was just yeah, he was there. Who inspires you? That's hard. That's hard one. That's a hard one. My daughter-in-law, Marlene Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> you got it, Marlene. <laughs> Perfect, Mar. My, my loving daughter-in-law from New Jersey. <laughs> you can think more about that because it doesn't have to be one person, but we now know who the one is. Oh, my family, yeah. My who, family. Who was your alive. favorite president? Oh, Kennedy. If you could choose any career, other than what you did, what would it be? A home economist. I wish I'd have gone to Davis and followed through on cooking and sewing. And, yep. I like that. 
You didn't know that. Never knew that. Yeah, well, I, yeah, I always loved to sew and I loved to cook and I took that in, in high school. I, I wish my mother would, they never thought about going to college then. A few of my friends went to college. A few did? A few. Oh. Not everybody. I had signed up to go to junior college. And then when I met dad, and that summer I got a job at Cal Western, and that was the end. I didn't go to, I didn't go to college. Money was more important then. And I wish my mother had made me go to college. But they didn't think about then. Even my sister and I both wonder why. Hmm. Did your parents? Mom, this is about you. you. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Dear God. Have you always been a Democrat? always. Dad and I registered together at the state fair. My birthday when I turned 21, he waited for me to be 21 and we went to the state fair and registered there. I was pregnant with you. What are some of your favorite things to do? Uh, okay. Uh, I love to go to the theater. I love playing bridge. I like being with pe I'm a people person. I like being with people. <laughs> okay, we're going to take a break. Oh, good. I get to blow Go. my nose. <laughs> oh, happy Thanksgiving, everyone, from beautiful Santa Cruz. As you can see, the sun is out. Most of the people are in getting ready for Thanksgiving dinner at Meredith's. I think there's 20 some odd that are coming. Anyway, first of all, I want to clear up some of the things I said. Uh, I don't want you to get the opinion, different opinion about my dad, but he was a loving, sweet, gentle man who did whatever my mom said to do. We all did, in fact. <laughs> and uh, the other thing was the Kennedys stood out because it was like a fairy tale story. But I love the Obamas. They were car going by. <laughs> They were, they were a real family, and it was really the Obamas. And to think that I lived through the first black president, and almost the first woman president, however, Hillary did win by the popular vote of over two million people. So that doesn't make me feel bad. Okay, Sue, what else do you want to know? Okay, Mom. Um, what are some of the things that make you proud? Of my family, most of all. I, Dad and I were so blessed to have four wonderful children, and it's just my greatest joy. And the, their children that they have given me, my greatest, greatest joy. What is this, what is the first thing you notice about people when you meet them? I guess, I guess their personality. Uh, yes. I don't, I don't notice little things, it's just the overall person. How do you feel about the state of the world today? It's very sad, very sad. I'm glad I'm on my way out, as you might say, yeah. No, I, I, lived, the, I lived the best of times, really. Just wonderful times. What is a favorite food of yours? Oh my gosh, favorite food. A you favorite. Can, you can list them. <laughs> as, you, as you can see, I, I love to eat. It'd be better to say what is my least favorite food. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Because what do you eat? <laughs> I, I don't like turnips or parsnips. That's about it. <laughs> Other than that, just good food. That's great. What makes you laugh? Oh, happy. Happy time. Uh, things that people say. What was a favorite time in your life? I think you asked me that once. Well, it, was it was high different. school. It was teen years. Yeah, it was I teen my that. teen years. Okay. Yeah, you hear of all the things going on today with, uh, yeah, the, and I just was lucky. It was a good teenage life. A lot of kids today hate high school, and that was my favorite time. Where did you get your sense of style? From my mother, because she worked in fashion, and from the time I was 13, I was down brushing hats in the millinery department and and then I became the high school rep for Hale Brothers and I had a radio show and uh, 
You had a radio show? Uh -huh. Once a week at KFPK. No way. And in the in the our school paper, they ran a great big ad. You know, come see Vivian Rogers. <laughs> at, oh and help, God. she'll help you find what you need to wear. And I'd talk about. Yeah, I'd go down every Friday after school and talk about what dances were going on, what football games were going on, and then I'd get in, oh, some great new formals just came in, or you should see the new cashmere sweaters, and come see me and I'll help you find one. Yeah. Oh my God. And my sister even had one in later years on a radio show. And didn't, I didn't even realize that until we were talking later on. Yeah. What do you think drives you? Oh, drives me. I'm a very easy going person. Get up, get in the morning. Yeah. You know, what gets to you go going? places. To get out of the house, to go places. You like being with people more than yes, staying Yes, I'm at a home. people person. I am definitely a people person. How would you describe your mother? Uh, very domineering. Yeah. We never argued. We just did what she said, and that was it. Who's coming? We have company. Okay. What kind of personality did she have? Personality, your mom. Uh, Domineering. She was a controller. But and I'm probably a controller. Did she laugh? Did she enjoy No, she time? never laughed. She never laughed. She would never wear a costume. No. We could never get her to... No. Loosen never, up? She, no, she would never relax. Don't set, Mike. I'll just carry him. Okay, we were care. talking about your mom and her sense of style and how you would describe her personality? Uh, she was a very serious person. Uh, I never saw her ever, and she lived with us for eight and a half years. I never saw her without makeup or her earrings on or dressed. She would never let down. You were around her, you must know that. She just, she was always, always perfect. Yeah. And you were just saying to me off camera that she, you and her bonded over. That was because of the style. I mean, she grew up there. I, I'd get out of school and go down there and she'd have dresses picked out for me. And I mean, I was so lucky. We, we didn't have money, but we never wanted for anything. And I was thinking about it. I had seven formals in, in three years of high school. Wow because we just went sophomore, junior, and senior, and I, but I had seven formals. And Auntie can tell you that, because she, she got them all cut off. Did you hand. ever wear the same one twice? Probably, yeah. Because there were, the, as I said, in those days, there were four sororities and four fraternities, and each one had a formal dance of the year. And luckily, I was invited to each fraternity dance, so that was four in one year, and then my own sororities, yeah. Yeah. It was a whole different world. No fun. I'm going to stop right now. Um, are you a supporter of women's rights? Oh, definitely. It's come such a long way. That Was it Gloria Steinman that's got it going? Yeah, it's come a long way. Can you imagine not being able to vote in the no. 1920s? I, grandma, like grandma. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, no. You just, yeah, you know, too bad. You accept so much, you don't realize the people that don't have those advantages. It's a beautiful hot day here, by the way. My shoulders are getting, I can't believe this weather, it's so great. Who have been some of the most important people in your life? Oh, my family, definitely my family. And Brother Bertram was a mentor. I knew we met Brother Bertram before I knew Jack. Uh, yeah, he was up in the mountains when we rented a cabin. The Christian Brothers rented a cabin next door to ours. I was like freshman or eighth grade, maybe. Yeah, he and Brother Eugene and Brother Walter. And, oh, the good old days. So you met Dad up oh, at yeah. what, Camp Sacramento? No, I met Dad. My best friend, Pat Armstrong, was going out with him. And this new guy came to school, Mason Regal. And Pat just, wow, she went over the hill. <laughs> and uh, She had a date with Dad, and she broke it. And Iris, another good friend, who's, she was going with a boy from Christian Brothers. And, and so she said to Jack, oh, I know a gal, why don't you call her? 
And so dad called me and asked me to go. And then uh, <laughs> he called the day of and said, we're gonna have to cancel our date because I can't get a ride and he didn't have a car. And I said, oh, well, I could take the streetcar. And we took the streetcar and then walked six blocks. And the next day he went back to basketball practice and said, uh, I just met the gal I'm gonna marry to Brother Bertram. And Brother Bertram said, oh my gosh, what's her name? And he said, Vivian Rogers. And Brother says, I know her. And that's how it all started. And Brother would tell that story, yeah. And that was it. That was on May 10th, 1943. Wow. Some he, went of the in, other... he went in the service then on June 16th on his birthday. He left for the Navy. Yeah. Other favorite people in your life? Uh, women friends like Ruth Kima? Oh, or... Yeah, I have a lot of wonderful friends. Ruth was a great friend. Rita is still a great friend. Pat, Regal. Yeah, we're still great friends. And Shirley Haskell. These were all bridesmaids, you know, so, and they're still alive. We still correspond. Now here's a hard question for you. What advice would you give to a woman turning 70? Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> that kind of means you, honey. Just a woman. Just a woman <laughs> like my daughter makes me feel very old. I think I have a daughter going to be 70. Oh, my God. Uh, enjoy every minute. Enjoy every minute. Because that starts a new phase. Oh, of no. 90 is, nine, when I hit 90, that's when I felt. After 90, I felt old. I was, I was still going strong at 70, so. That's good, and that's you're, encouraging. And, and 70 now is like 50. Yeah. I mean, yeah, look at you. You, yep. You were you just gonna tell me how young I look? I'm just gonna say. <laughs> no. Yeah, you do. I, I, would, I would really, if I didn't know you, I'd think you were maybe gonna be 60. Wow, Mom, thank you. You do well, honey. What are some of the good things about getting older? It's easy to talk about the bad things. Oh, people help you. <laughs> yeah. There you people go. People are so considerate, yeah. And when you're used to being independent, it's hard to accept the help from other people. But boy, do I need it now. <laughs> do you feel wiser? Oh my gosh, yes. As you get older? Yeah. Forget the college. <laughs> A lot wiser. Yeah. Oh, Maybe definitely. not get as excited about things. You're right. Or... Oh, I don't get excited at all. If I can't change it, I don't worry about it. That's my theory. You can't worry about anything that you can't control. That sounds like someone's logo. logo. I learned from that, yeah. How would you like to be remembered? Oh, as a happy, friendly person. Yeah. It's just a caring. Uh, I am caring and I, and I love friendships. And I love my family around. This is a special treat down here in Santa Cruz. Too bad you're not here, Mary. And Tom. I didn't know if you were down there. Okay, yeah. We're okay, you were just talking to me off camera about the young guy that um, oh. was kind of had a crush on you, oh, shall Willard we say? Davis. Yeah, Willard Willard Davis. Davis. Joanne can verify this. <laughs> so tell me the story about Willard Davis. Are you on? Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, how did I meet? I didn't even, I don't know how I met Willard Davis, but anyway, I was modeling at the Bomberche every weekend and Fridays and Saturdays, just informal modeling. And Willard Davis went to Sacramento High, so I didn't know him, but he got a big crush on me. And in the Sacramento High School, news gossip column it was where does Willard Davis go every weekend you can find him peeking through the glass doors at Barmerche while watching me model Vivian Ryan <laughs> yeah, model. Rogers and then uh, so then he asked me out to his fraternity's dinner dance and and I accepted and he came and he was so embarrassed because his family had gone out of town and left him with the housekeeper with the Willard Davis plumbing truck 
and she had to drive us to the Eastern Star Temple. And he, he, we had to get out two blocks away so no one would see him in the truck and walk to the dance. And we got a ride with someone home. But there were some of the fun things that happened, yeah. Were there streetcars? Oh, yeah. In downtown Sacramento? Oh, yeah. It went right from the corner of our house, 2nd Avenue, up to 21st Street, all the way to K. Do you remember how much it cost? Seven cents or five cents, yeah. My mom would give us a quarter, and it would take us on the streetcar to the theater downtown, 10 cents, five cents for the streetcar, 10 cents for the show, and we had 10 cents for, for candy. Yeah, Barbara Jean and I, that was our Saturday thing when we were little. Right. This was like eighth, seventh and eighth grade. Now, when you were a young teenager, you had to take your sister with you everywhere? Everywhere, everywhere. No matter what? It's a wonder went. Jack even liked me. I mean, to the football game, Rosemary and Barbara Jean. To the theater, Barbara Jean and Rosemary. Barbara Jean says now, it's a wonder you didn't hate me. And I said, I did. <laughs> But if I could go if Barbara Jean went along, so. And how many years younger is she? Five and a half, five and a half years. So it's funny, those things that we laugh about now. And when did you, was it when you got married that you stopped having to take her everywhere? Yeah, when dad went away is when we stopped. Because okay. he was away, you know, for two years. Right. And yeah, but it was in our short time that we, and he'd come home and we'd go, well, take your sister, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And then Rosemary, can I come? And Rosemary says, no, I'm so embarrassed to think how we always had to be there with, with you and Jack. Yeah, it's a whole different ball game. You left your house to get married. Yeah. You know, you didn't have any independence, any independence then. It was just from marriage to house to wedding, to house to wedding, yeah. But you had a big wedding. Yeah, big, huge, huge. How many people? They broke rules. There were over 400 people. Wow. Yeah. And that was a funny thing, too, because I don't know how we made the mistake and no one caught it. We were counting invitations that we sent out for how many people would be at the reception. And it was double. And the caterers at the hotel senator were losing their minds. They were making cheese, eggs, egg hors d'oeuvres. They were just anything to feed the people. They were kind of upset about it. But yeah, it you was, can imagine. And it broke all rules. There never, Catholic Church didn't allow weddings on Sunday. It was and Easter Sunday. It was Easter Sunday. And uh, we received communion, which was another thing. You just didn't do that. We walked up to the altar and to the tabernacle and the Monsignor gave us communion. And he, it was just right after the war and he, I guess he liked that night. And uh, he let us get married on Easter Sunday, which was a shock. Because they just, and still I tell people that. And I say, I can prove it. I have pictures right. on Sunday, April 21st. Yeah. Which was great. So when you were in high school, were there some wild times? Would you consider yourselves the wild no. crowd? No, it wasn't wild. It wasn't wild. Just regular teenage? Yeah. yeah. Drinking and oh, I can remember during speeding. the summer sitting in the breakfast room, all of us with the windows open. It's wonder my mother didn't know that, and we all were learning to smoke, and we'd we can remember writing a letter. Please give my son a package of cigarettes, Mrs. Harris, <laughs> you know? and we'd send Bob up to the store with a quarter for a pack of cigarettes, and we'd all sit around smoking. The house must have smelled like a smokestack. Yeah. How about drinking? Same no, thing? No, never did that. There wasn't drinking in those days. Um, Are you kidding? No, I'm not. Um, my dad and mom had a drink every night when they came home from work. They'd sit at the table. At a the, cocktail, their wing I remember. Back, wing, wing back chairs in the window and they'd always have a drink and then we had little tiny root beer glasses. They, they'd mix seven up and a little dash of whiskey from the time I was little. So drinking didn't mean anything right. to me. Right, I'm gonna turn okay. this off okay. now. Okay, what in your life would you do differently if you could? Well, I answered that. We're on tape now. Yeah, uh, going to college. I wish I had gone a couple years to college. I don't know why. 
Well, Barbara Jean doesn't understand either why her parents, I think my mother just wanted me to get married. That was it in those days. Yeah. So you notice we've moved to another place because it's gotten so hot. I'm ready to go in and take winters off. It's beautiful out. Uh, tell me some of the fun stories in high school. I can always remember the Alan Cunningham, Jack Ryan oh my gosh. car accident or always something. Always trouble. Alan, <laughs> we always had trouble. The first time was uh, when we went out to Farrell swimming. Did I ever say how Dad and I, we went to that dance as a blind date, and the next day he went back, you know, and told Brother Bertram. And then the next day was Sunday, and I was Rosemary's sponsor at Confirmation. And so I went to St. Francis Church, and we all marched in, and then the bishop came in with his two altar boys. And who were they? But Dad and Alan Cunningham. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't believe it. And he spotted me, and we kind of, and that, and then we came out, and when we we're standing at the back of the door was Dad, and he said, uh, "Would you like to go swimming out to Farrell's house, which is out on Froakes Boulevard?" And I said, "Oh, I can't. I'm involved in this confirmation thing." And Rosemary said, "Oh, go, oh, go, Vivian, go." She had a big crush on Jack at that, the minute she met him. And so I asked my mother, and they said, "Just be back in time for dinner." And so I got went home, got my bathing suit, and the Farrells, they had dressing rooms on one side of the pool. Got in my bathing suit and forgot about time, and Mrs. Farrell called out and she said, your mother's on the phone, get home right now. And I went, oh my God, I'm in trouble. So I got dressed and was walking by the pool and Tom Farrell's brother pushed me and got all my clothes wet. My good clothes, it was my graduation dress to be. And Alan says, oh, don't worry, we we'll just live a few blocks away. Uh, my mother, we've got a dryer, we'll go home and my mom can fix you up. Well, Mrs. Cunningham was a very slow mover, nothing bothered her. And she gave me a bathrobe and she put all my clothes in the dryer. Meantime, the clock is ticking and I'm going, I gotta get home, I gotta get home. And going home, rushing down 21st Street, Alan was speeding, got a ticket. And that put things later. It's now dark, and I was supposed to be home by six. It's probably nine o'clock. And my dad, I've never seen my dad mad before in my life. He was out pacing the sidewalk in front of the house. And we got out of the car. Jack opened the door and got out, and he said, where in the hell do you think you've been? Jack says, see ya. <laughs> he jumped in the car, and off he went. <laughs> that was one of our first Alan Cunningham stories. Then we double dated all the time because he went with Peggy, my best friend, Peggy Hobrecht. And then they were both in the wedding. And then we got married and our wedding gift, I was pregnant with you and he was a little late on the wedding gift. And he comes with this Wait, great- Wait, you were pregnant with me when you got married? No, 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 oh. no. I was pregnant when he gave me the, he uh, gave us our wedding present. Oh, I see. And he comes to the house and he has this great big red thoroughbred Irish setter with a big sign around its neck. My name is Mike. And I, I said, I don't want, a, I never had a dog, an animal in my life. My mom and dad didn't like animals. And I said, I was going to name our baby Mike if it was a boy. I don't want a dog named Mike. Anyway, the dog was horrible. He, ch he was such a thoroughbred, purebred. He chewed up my wedding robe he chewed up my alligator shoes and finally he jumped over the fence and chewed up someone's chickens and that oh that was the worst part that's when I said go we had you and he he didn't like you at all because we had him first and we went through you and how did that go anyway we were oh yeah I had you on the couch and he jumped up and scratched your eye and made it bleed. And I called dad at work and I says, get home, you've got to take this dog. She could have, he could have put Sue's eye, Sue Ann's eye out. Yeah, so Alan came and got the dog and he took it home and he couldn't train it. And it ended up, he took it to Woodland to be trained professionally. So it was just a bad dog. And that was another Alan story. Oh, there were so many. 
And when I was pregnant, he'd come every day and take me out to his mother's out in the country because their house was air conditioned and I didn't, they, they were just- Were you sick? Very close, terribly sick. With me or oh, Mike? you, three months, sick, sick. And so, um, yeah, I'd have shots and everything. And, and so Mrs. Cunningham, was so nice. I'd just stay out there in her air-conditioned house. When he had to go get his dad at work, he'd bring me home. And some people saw this going on, him picking me up after dad went to work. And so the big scandal was he was he was your father. Of course, we all laughed. <laughs> we who knew, knew different. Right. Anyway, but then, and then just the week before we were married, I had, uh, I had, uh, what did I have? I was anemic. And I had to stay in bed so many hours, and there was this big party. So Alan and Dad came by and s spent a little time with me in bed, and then they left to go to this party. And they were in an accident, and they rolled the car three times and totaled, <laughs> totaled his parents' car. This is the way our stories with Alan Cunningham seemed like we were always in trouble with Alan. Anyway. He remained a good friend for many years. Well, didn't you call Brother Bertram on that deal to come help you or something? Oh, no, Dad did. When they were in high school, they had rolled a car, too, and they called Brother Bertram. You know, Brother Bertram was a main part of our life, too. And here comes my darling mother, daughter-in-law, mother Marlene, who's come to hear all this stupid stuff <laughs> my life story. Now, talk about that part, the Brother Bertram... Oh, um, he was always there. How did Dad get so close to him when he was, in fact, his teacher? Brother Bertram, we find out later, was 11 years older right. than Dad. And it was his first teaching job at Christian Brothers. They gave him a freshman class to be the moderator of, and he followed them all through high school. Oh. And, I mean, Brother Bertram did things like when Dad graduated, uh, they didn't want that he was afraid of drink and the guys drinking and so brother Bertram after graduation sneaked one of the cars out and took us all to different houses to parties and stuff and when he went back the principal was waiting for him to come in and he got punished yeah for taking for discipline <laughs> yeah but that was brother the kids kids came first was was he dad's basketball coach too, he was or dad and don mckenzie's basketball coach oh my gosh. and dad and don mckenzie both made uh all-star city city what do they call that anyway city yeah all, all stars all city. Yeah, all city all stars yeah and here how that it is it ends up don has a beautiful daughter Mar marlene <laughs> meredith and pat our yeah, son okay. marries meredith and here dad and Don had been high school friends, you know, out small world. Yeah. So Mac and Travis were lucky. Their grandpas were friends forever. Yeah, so true. Yeah. Any other fun This is stories? a big interview, you realize. Any, uh, <laughs> yes, I do. any other fun stories? You could, you'd like to tell oh, us God. that we haven't covered? I have to think, to think about that. You have to make me have another night. How long night. have you been coming to Santa Cruz? Oh my gosh. Since Mary, because it was Mary was in the um, yeah, seventh or eighth grade, because it was Tahoe when I was yeah when you a were growing up tween. it was Tahoe mm -hmm. and that was every year you had fun at Tahoe I loved it. yeah yeah and then when Mary uh, we stopped we had been at the Orb Grove's place in Aptos with brother brother was always with us he spent every vacation with us. We went to Europe together. He was part of our lives. I know. He cut the boy's hair. You know, he, he, he was always there. He was just a special, special he person. He was on the altar when we all got married. Oh, he's he been was through every... We, to pick up the pieces when we got divorced. Right. And he never, he, he, you know, even being a religious, he, he, he loved you still, you know. Uh, Divorces didn't matter. Oh, right, right. That type of thing. No, he was not judgmental. Uh, he was not judgmental. At, at Even all. with Mary, you know, leaving the church, he was not judgmental at all. Never. And he never, ever gave advice. No. Never. Right. He'd see you through things, but he wouldn't say, you, you shouldn't have done that, or why don't you do this? He never. Special, special person. I'm sure he's an angel in heaven. 
What would you say is your life's philosophy? Enjoy every single day. <clears throat> Enjoy every day. And I do. If I can't change the world, I don't worry about it. So it just enjoy it. Yeah. That's great. Anything else you want to talk about? I could say I'm ready to go. <laughs> we don't want you to go. There's another thing, another another life waiting for me. I just hope their dad's there to meet me. Hope he'll recognize me. <laughs> oh my god, that's cute. Okay, well mom, I think Unless we have any other, I think we covered get it. any other things that this, we want to get on tape? Nope. This, has been this is great. a special time. Yeah, and I think of all the years in Santa Cruz, staying at La Bahia and uh, with the Barbos, the Franzoyas, the Asta, Astoyas, uh, the Nezabiches, all those names. And the Stassies. And the Jack Stassi, yeah. Oh, those were wonderful years. Those were all high school friends. All, all high school friends with families, and the kids are still friendly, you know, Anna Marie. And it now just, we're all friends with the and kids. And now you're all friends with the kids. It just goes on. That was wonderful years. You can't buy that type of life. Right. No. And money doesn't buy anything. Look at us all here today. What, 20 of us are going to be for dinner? And is there are families that don't talk. And just, I'm blessed. I've just been blessed. Okay. Is that it? Well, this has been fun. It sure has. There's questions it's, I've wanted to ask you. Oh, that my God. Isn't that I funny? think maybe someday other uh, generations would like to, uh, you know, hear. Yeah, laugh about it, yeah. You know, because we always do that now about Grandma Ryan. We wish oh, we would have asked her this. Of course, I didn't have any exciting life, but I, it was great. We didn't have money. I think you've had a very exciting Are life. Are we on tape still? Yep. Oh, God. No, I just, oh, it was just so, I love it, you know, I've just, I think, how did God know to put Dad and I together? And we went through many, many hurdles, which probably today kids would get divorced, and I'm sure if we had a gun in the house, he might have shot me, or I might have shot him at times, but it was really a true love, true love, so that I am thankful for, and God, what it gave me four children and now great-grandchildren it's yeah. unreal yeah. <laughs> I never thought I'd be it is great huh? yep it's unreal what a day this is I, I gotta walk down to the water well we'll do that see the ocean we'll do that now now what are we off no okay but I'll leave it going in case you just know that's, talk about that's fine <laughs> I'm talked out <laughs> okay uh, I don't know where this film is gonna go I hope you get some laughs and learn something Maybe you connected some way or other in my life. And I, all of you that see this, I want you to know how much I love you. And I'm so proud of all of you. Amen. Amen. <laughs> <laughs>